welcome to part A. Ooh! Ooh! Of episode Sexy Six. <laughs> we got a lot of songs going on in Sexy Six, Sex, 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 Sexy Six. Sexy. Sexy. Ooh! Six, six, six. Yeah, absolutely. Life is music. Vibrations all around. Love the throat chakra. Love the heart chakra. We live here forever. <laughs> this is Tablet Talks. All right. I am your boy. I am your author. And I am your host. I am your friendly universehood. Tootie Tristan gets this. I almost wanted to say like waterhood because everything is underwater. You feel me? Because everything is air. Air is underwater. Air is what water looks like. So really everything is underwater because everything is a denser version of us feeling like connecting. Pretty cool. If you don't feel like connecting, then you're not going to experience the air. And that's the thing. That's really the first thing. Everything before that is leading up to the thing. All right. So fire and water, those are internal elements. Those are leading up to the first thing, which is air. And even then, earth is the thing that we actually cling to. Clearly, we stand on earth. Thanks for the stability, earth. So here we are in tablet talks, looking at this earth, looking at this logic of this language. All right. All these details. All of us have all these different ideas and relationships with all the words I'm using right now. Like no matter how much I communicate, I never truly know. I can never actually understand. I can never actually see how you're taking my words. I literally cannot conceive. I do not have a perception of your relationship with the words that I'm using. So I'm over here in this world assuming <laughs> that you're catching the message that I'm putting out based on the words that I'm putting together in this sentence. So communication is a whole thing, dude. All right. This is why these white supremacists are obsessed with creating this English language and acting like I came back and then articulated my stuff through it. And like, I'm transmitting my true wisdom about how we're all source when really, no, I've already covered how, Ba especially based on everything I just said, how could anyone relay the same message that I have? Like how, like me as Hermes, as Tahuti, how am I going to have my own infinitely individual perspective of the universe and be like, okay, I want someone else to tell people about this. That's <laughs> bro. Where's the wisdom? The, like I'm already not wise. I already don't deserve to be the God of wisdom. If I'm okay with other people speaking my mind, <laughs> what <laughs> it just shows these, uh, white supremacist, um, mindsets and how they're mind controlled and they literally can't even conceive of speaking from their own mind. So whatever. They're not about to paint me in that way. They can't conceive that I would find that important. They'd be like, yeah, Thoth, Thoth is so infinite that he wouldn't come down here. So he would transmit a message and then trust me to put it out. It's like, well, I don't know you. One, I don't know you. And two, I don't trust anyone but myself to communicate what I have to communicate. Like I would be fundamentally retarded to think that someone else can say what I have to say the same way. What? Dude, this is the colonialism. This is literally just how they work. All right. Colonizing, stealing stuff, and then acting like they're, if they're not the creator, which is what they're trying to do here. They're trying to say they created Thoth by saying that Thoth really points at all of us as source consciousness. So now they're the ones creating all of your ideas about source consciousness and you have to learn about source consciousness from them and unity and all that stuff. But 
I mean, when they can't really convince you that they create things, like when it's so obvious that Europe stole things from Egypt and stole things from America and, oh, wait, just stole everything. Basically, their whole individuality comes from stealing, comes from the metallic logic of consuming life that is not theirs. <laughs> when it's that focused on consuming life, when these entities are using logic, are creating the English language, are setting up the Industrial Revolution, are setting up money, are sacrificing Jesus, are creating all these ideas about how you are not the creator of your own world so that they can make you create theirs. Just know that it's because you're infinitely powerful, all right? <laughs> so the whole point of you being in this world you are doubling down every day on how awesome you truly are because the fact is other people need to convince you that you're worthless so that they can then make you a convict they convince you you're nothing so they can make you a convict of their nothingness of their spirit so they're taking your nothing your zero and making it a part of their zero so they can do magic math with you and now you're not creating for yourself you're creating for them and the only reason you're creating for them is because generally you feel like you're not worthy enough to create for yourself or you probably can't imagine how you would start to create for yourself. Like, who are you even? And then it's see, like there's so many levels to you being in a body and spending every single second, every single day focusing on the mystery, the my story and connecting with yourself. Everyone else wants you to connect with them. Like religion specifically desire you to connect with them because they make money the more you connect with them. Money is a representation of how much they drain your soul and get to build their world with your water, with your feelings. That's all money represents. How much people project their feelings into something so that that thing can grow and they don't. So religions especially desire you to connect with them because they don't want to connect with themselves. So just know it's doubly important to Connect with yourself. That's the point of fasting. Chapter 17. Overflowing hearts need no words. Interesting. We're drinking coffee right now. All right, so we got cushion cannabis, the KC. There's no F in this KC. And that... I mean, I guess it's for the best. It's healthier this way. It's healthier this way. <laughs> Just KC, no F, no F. Those commentary in modern English. When your heart is overflowing with love, no speaking is needed. Your heart always speaks louder than words. See, like, that's fun. This is flowery. I mean, to make it true, though, like, it is true. Uh, love is desire. Um, so love is like luciferian like luciferian is all about love and light because it's all about desire so i have spoken negatively on lucifer in the past just because of getting lost in the light really not about to be speaking i need to just watch that gemini stuff basically <laughs> of speaking negatively on almost anything even though it's like it's inevitable because the point of negativity is for the positivity of everybody. If you're not negative about something that's negative, then you're not positive. So if you don't get negative about the police killing black people, for example, or slavery, then it will keep happening. Like it took people to feel negative about slavery for then the government to be like, oh, okay, we also feel negative about slavery. Let's turn it into the prison industrial system. Now we feel positive about it again. And everyone feels positive about it again because now instead of it being black people and indigenous peoples being enslaved just because we need them, we have convinced everyone that they are inherently criminals somehow in their own land that we stole from them. They're criminals. <laughs> and now we will continue enslaving them in the same way that we did before, but more in the dark. And actually worse because people deny it. Pretty cool. And that was centuries. Here we are though in 2021 where... What was that uh, documentary? Like the 21st Amendment or something? Some amendment. 
where people start getting woke on the prison industrial system and the privatized prison industrial system, the triple P. That's like really because they really like want that to be ascension energy. And that is their ascension energy. Like the Christian Judeo system shows that like they make all of their creation, all of their infinite satisfaction on enslaving other spirits, on enslaving other individuals. And it's like if you love yourself, there would be no need to interact with anyone. Like you shouldn't really need to talk to people. And look, that's me getting in my filth bag, all right? Like, I can be alone for infinity and beyond. And it's like, the way that hell gets created is because spirits don't love being alone. That's why people are scared of death. Because they're going to go back to being alone instead of being in water, being all one inside of this body. And it's like, bro, we're always alone. Like, you're projecting from being alone. So it's literally just... Of course, that separation, you have to believe that you are the body to think that death is real and that all of a sudden now you're going to go somewhere else when it's all your mind. It's all you experiencing yourself. And then we're doing this together. Man. White supremacy. This is, hey, it helps us level up. It helps us level. Up. I'm just so passionately angry about this stuff, as you can tell if you... <laughs> If you've been with us through Tablet Talks, clearly I'm passionate about spirits enslaving other spirits and how backwards that is. Because it's like, bro, why? It's just like there's, there's no fun in that. There's no fun in colonizing other people's lives and making other people do things that they don't do themselves. It's like... It's just literally like these white supremacists and the light supremacists. Again, it's just white is the whoop, easy version, but it's light supremacists. Because darkness, if you're a dark supremacist, you would be all about how everything is connected above all. And you might, you would be like toxically feminine then. Like a light supremacist is toxically masculine. A dark supremacist would be toxically feminine. So a dark supremacist might actually be like chaos energy, where it's like destroy everything, make it all one or something. <laughs> so and then light supremacy, as we're seeing, is like, let's consume everything that's all one so that we can make something new, because that's the point of light is to separate itself from the darkness. So light is the artificial intelligence. Darkness is that natural intelligence. Man, life is truly a video game. All of simulations, all lives are video games that we create to hang out and level up. It's like, the I mean, life is always going to be the most advanced video game that we can possibly conceive. Every video game we create will be inside of life. And then those games help us create better life. So, I mean, that's just where we learn it's all light. A video game, a video in general. It's just a light moving on a screen. This is what life is. When you really think about it, like you in life, you have no idea what things are. Like really, like if I actually blank out my mind and act like I'm a child and look around, I don't have names for anything I'm seeing in the room around me. I don't know what these things are. I don't know how to use them. I didn't build a connection with them. I didn't build a relationship. I don't have that subconscious memory of like, Okay, I see that same shape. Boom. Now, like, I have this emotion in these this past thing. Okay, so I can project a pattern based on what this thing, how it's played a role in my life in the past. And now I know that it's a phone that I can pick up and use to call my mom. Now I can connect to my family. But it was only because I would used it to connect before. So this is just all of life. Darkness is a connection. Light is a separation. So everything you see is light. It's separate, but it all exists inside of darkness. It's all gradients of darkness. Darkness itself being simultaneously the absence of light and the accumulation of light. And that's just where darkness is emotion, light is logic or thoughts. So all thoughts are hyper-specific emotions. Like there's no thought that isn't hyper-specifically emotional. It's just like the point of a thought 
is to ground this watery emotion so much that it's a fact. It's a stable earth that the water can now nurture and we can create life from. So this is the point of us making up facts or like having laws of reality, quote unquote. Well, I keep talking so much that I'm not even reading this tablet. This is how it has to be though, because this is like just very important when we're dealing with the world, when we're dealing with this planet and seeing light and darkness and just how lost everyone is in light. Like everyone is so positive and lovely about light. Like that's like the Lucifer stuff, light and love, very masculine. And it's just all desire. Whereas darkness, it's desireless, closer to desireless because it's not about getting lost and being an individual. It's about um, really being lost and being a collective. So important to just not be any kind of supremacist, just be a spirit, be nothing and know that you create all of your light from your darkness. You create all of your thoughts from your feelings and you are neither of these things. So shock contributes her wisdom. This is truly short admonition. Yet the wise would do well to heed this truth. You can do much good by sitting in silence while setting out the vibrations of pure love from your heart. Try this the next time you desire to let someone know that they are loved. Sit and think of them, holding in your heart. Imagine actual ways of love going out to them. I do this. This is like a great thing to do, for sure. I mean, shout out these tablets, for real. <clears throat> they have some fun mystic things in here, especially with Sashat saying it instead of me. Uh, it's a totally different vibe than any of the other tablets here in sex, C6, sex, 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 sex. So shout out sending love to people when you think of them. Specifically, when you find yourself having thoughts about people that you don't even want to have, or if you're like thinking negatively about people, especially if like, if you're even around people who are thinking negatively about other people, like, you can have your negative thoughts on lock, but you can still find yourself around people who end up gossiping and like they're talking negatively about people. If you actively send love, send the desire of support, basically, because love is just, love is the desire to express one's individuality. It's just that to be an individual, you have to be part of a collective. So this is why it takes two to tango. It takes that individual and the collective for all of life to be made, for that man and that woman. So love is then really that feminine, that collective, and living. Love allows us to live. So that's where love becomes live, that O oh, in love becomes an I, and now you're being masculine. Now you're actually cutting through reality instead of just being a circle spirit true love being desireless because that's freedom. That's actually true love. It's just then people love to live. And now that's the masculine turning into an I, an individual. So everything that we experience in life is created by us as individuals communicating in different degrees. And then it's like, what is your awareness in your communication, knowing that your communication is what is building life right now, right now, like right now. Your body is being built based on how you communicate right now, right, right, right now. At this very moment, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. So it's all communication. Everything is chi, and that's why air is constantly expanding. We're constantly expanding. Scarcity is an illusion. <laughs> like everything is abundant. You're only growing. It's just that a muscle, like when you think about exercise, you appear to, to get weaker after a workout because you have exhausted yourself. That's what it's like just doing anything. But then, of course, with time, the point of exhausting yourself is that now you can exist longer. So it's like the spirit extends its stay the more it exhausts and exercises its demons out or just itself. It works feelings out. And now it can 
express itself further, all this EX stuff, because it's just external. It's all about that yang, which takes the yin to get there. Again, the spirit's not the yin. The yang is the physical. The yin is the astral, the mental. The yang is the breath out. The yin is the breath in. And the spirit is the no breath at all. And the spirit desires to breathe out because the breathing out is air. All right, so breathing out air, that builds earth. The, those particles settle out like <sighs> boom, lit. Breathing in fire, water helps keep you connected and keeps your imagination going. That's the astral realm. So that's hence your dreams are your fire and water, your astral, whereas your air and earth is you making that actually reality. Hence you having a body in general. You know for a fact that you have this body for a reason. You know you're in a body for a reason. It's just like, what is that reason? And now, you know, if you go to sleep and tune in every day, <laughs> your spirit will let you know. You can do much good by sitting in silence while sending out the vibrations of pure love from your heart. So this is just an awesome thing to do, for sure. Because the point of um, everything being connected by darkness is that we all feel like creating life together, which means that when you know that everything is communicating because it's all air based on how we're all connected to create life by how we ignite our imaginations into our connections. Now, you're actually, um, <laughs> why am I spacing out? Boo, boo, right. We all had to be connected to build a world. So when you're communicating, even in your head, and you're just sending that out, this is why gossip is toxic. If you're in a group of people who are talking negatively about somebody, that's an attack on that person. Like they're like building a spaceship in the astral realm. And that spaceship is then like shooting just invisible shots, like, you know, fire water shots at the spirit. So this spirit, that's where... When you like, especially let's just say in school or whatever, but when you meet someone and it's, let's say like a very social environment. So school is the best environment where people will talk behind each other's backs, but then act like they're friends to each other's faces. And it's easy if you're not really empathetic or not in tune with the fire and water to interact with someone who hates you, but because they show you some nice air and earth, you actually think that you're friends and you continue to project your fire and water into them like you have a good relationship. When, if you were in tune with your air and earth, you might meet them and then catch a vibe like, whoa, hold up. Like, I feel this, this feels wrong. And then that's where dissecting it further, you may very well just intuitively scope out that they've been talking shit about you. <laughs> that they actually hate you behind closed doors. And because they desire to get along with you out in the open, out in public, they will. And then that's where we just get the idea of like fake people, where it's like, well, why are you talking so negatively behind my back, but then in front of me, you don't wanna say any of that stuff at all. I'm someone who likes to say like anything negative that I have about someone in my life, I'll say that to your face. And that's just me as a Taurus Virgo, like straight up. That's so funny. I've let this tablet just flip off. This is what tablet talks is supposed to be. So whatever. It's to me really important as Virgo and Earth and then Gemini. So Virgo moon, Earth sun, Gemini ascendant. I am literally like, all about discussing the hardest, most difficult things in a light way and like the widest, most applicable way. Like Virgo being all about like darkness and bringing what's dark to the surface and then Taurus being like, and then let's fix that. And that would then be like a pyramid. And then that's for everything in the universe to be able to communicate with and gain wisdom from hence like the gemini shit very very important to me that i'm able to 
get cold and calculated and discerning isn't the right word dissecting like being like to be able to dissect everything with people and that just inherently gets negative um because negativity is separation so it looks positive when you're just not dissecting anything so this is why like people can very much not like virgos <laughs> because we dissect things too much and we're too analytical and we're looking at the details way too hard and figuring out like how do all the details connect in the darkness and like what like how is how is this all life and blah 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 blah. So like a Virgo can get very lost in the details. Cause the details may very well not matter that much. Life is details, but like so. <laughs> yeah. So This is why it's just very important to watch how you communicate about people, like Sashat is saying. Because if you're like speaking negatively about people, they can feel that. And it's kind of like, and they may not actually be able to feel that. They probably won't. Like if they're not really aware. But it's just like they kind of can. Because it's really, it's an aura thing. Because what happens is, the way that you communicate about people is literally you building up your perspective, your outlook on them. So it's not even like literally your communication goes out and hits them, but it's literally that your communication changes how you feel internally so that next time you meet them, it doesn't matter the image you put up because you've changed your aura and ignited it in a certain way so much. They can feel that. They can almost smell that. Like, oh, hmm, hmm, messages, bro. All right. They can smell that. Like your aura like exudes because your aura is your air. Your aura is how you ignite your fire and water. So this is why it's just very, very essential, very important to reflect. Um. Reflect all the time, <laughs> sit in darkness, sit in your subconscious all the time and let people shine their lights and don't take that light personally. And that's again, me as a Virgo being that dark earth where it's like, all right, I'm stable inside myself. What's going on here? I'll be mutable to that. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Taurus time. In general, it's way, way, there's just way more wisdom, way more wisdom. You're going to learn infinitely more when you reflect other people's light. And the more light you reflect from others, then you like learn how everyone is moving and such. And you'll see how they're all a reflection of you based on how you chose to interact with them. And then it's all up to who you want to be from there and how you feel interacting with all these people and these things and whatever, whatever. thing is when you spiritually know that if for you to be in a simulation you had to be creating that world with people i find it the most wise position to um support the freedom of just all spirits and that's what everything i do is about all this ascension stuff always ascending academy the pyramids just everything with ascension is about freedom it's about remembering that you are a spirit when what no matter what creation you're in no matter what density of mind you're lost in knowing how to use your own creation to ascend because that's the point is to be infinitely free so that we can actually have fun because fun is freedom truly <laughs> and we know that kids have fun when they're being free and then it's just of course we can't have too much freedom because that's dangerous. That's chaotic. And that's the point of then us getting logical and coming in with some orth, earth, orth, orthy earth and being like, all right, let's kind of put some fences <laughs> on this cliff. We got a really nice cliff here, but we might need a, a few fences. Maybe too many people are running off this cliff, you know, because it's like, Freedom is awesome. Freedom is 
Yes, everything. Uh, but like we're saying, that's almost synonymous with chaos. Like when we're talking about freedom, freedom positively is desire, absolutely. Negatively, it's chaos. Because freedom is then other spirits impinging upon other spirits. Like everyone just being chaotic. So when we're talking about sending love out to people, this is all about making sure that you're building the best life for yourself because the people in your life are building your life as well. So if you are going to send hate, if you're going to talk negatively about people behind closed doors, that's you destroying your own life. And that's you destroying your own life just based on, well, a myriad of factors. In general, that's you destroying your own life because they're about to feel that and especially whoever you're talking to it with the moment you tell one person something everyone kind of knows it that's and that's something that's very metaphysical where this is why it's important to love being alone because the moment you introduce something to the all one realm it's like okay well boom that's like that's for everyone like that's for the universe this is the water like there it is and it's really important <laughs> that you definitely do not be a hater. Being a hater is truly just the lowest form of existence because all you're doing is building up the thing that you're hating in a way that's destroying you. This is why people are like, oh, haters are my motivators. And motive haters, motivators, is it's right there. You're a motive hater. But the more you hate my motive, the greater my motive becomes. You feel me? Because then that's the point of demons making us great. When women, when emotional spirits get bitchy, negatively reactive to the ideas that they see, all that does is teach you more about the universe. And that's where if you're a spirit who's actually an artist and you're actually putting out big ideas, you want haters. <laughs> the more people who hate your ideas and are like attacking them, the more you're seeing how demons move. And that's training. That's metaphysical training. Because now you're able to ting, 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 just start deflecting all of that. That's the point of having debates, basically. That's the point of having, I mean, yeah, like any presidential debate, any sort of political debate is about people coming together with ideas and then hating and seeing like, all right, well, this hater is hating this way, but they just let me expose something about my idea that I didn't even get to expose before they started hating it. And then this hater started hating me. Whoa, I didn't even realize that. Thank you, hater. Now my idea just grew in a bigger way because they brought up a really good point in all their motive hating. So this is where if you're a hater, then it's like the lowest form of building life, but you're still building life because you're truly building someone else's life while destroying your own. You're not doing anything productive for yourself because you're focused on doing something. You feel good doing something that appears destructive to someone else. And then that's where that person who's getting your destructive energy is only getting stronger. So if you're a hater, if you're hating on people outside of yourself, turn the mirror, stop being bitchy to other people and learn how to bark orders at your own man. All right, take your own emotion into your own thought so you can create life inside of yourself. Because if you're hating others, then clearly you just hate yourself and you need to just start hating yourself instead of others. Don't externalize it, go internal and then use those emotions to build something you're proud of. And that's the point of being an artist, of being a spirit, using your emotions to stabilize a thought that people can relate with, and then we can all build life in it. And now, no matter what emotions you're feeling before that thought, life is better now because you're able to relate with people who are more in resonance 
with the emotions and frequency and space you're in when you created that. And that's the point of spirits being artists, of creating life in general. You get connections. So, with everything being connected, it's a shot, it's saying facts, send love out to people. But I literally just took 35 minutes and we're only on one page to go on many circles about love and connections and relationships and us building life. Because it's very important. And it's even more important, as I already said before, with like Lucifer and love and light and not actually demonizing Lucifer itself or just that word or anything Um, because it's way bigger than that. It's just about how light and love are the same thing because the love is the desire to express one's individuality. And light is the substance that allows spirits to do that. So all spirits love light in some way. So anything we love is something that we desire to utilize or to have in our space or to represent us as an individual, to be connected with at the very least. That's the point. Like if a spirit... A spirit does not want to be connected with something. It does not love, really. Like, the point of being a spirit is that you want to be connected with what you love, but you have to also then be connected with what you don't love so you can have life. Because life is balance. Life is the two. So you can't just have life be pure desire. All desires must be balanced out by what is just all the infinite opposites of that desire because that's the point of your desire is just one thought and it's like well there's all this other emotion and all this other stuff that has to inform whatever you want those would be demons try this next time you desire to let someone know that they are love Sin, think of them, holding them in your heart. Imagine actual ways of love going out to them. So love is the desire to express one's individuality. So I'm saying all this. This is a whole 37 minute thing of comedy. Just to really get our minds attuned to the right kind of love. Because that is what love is. And true love is with spirit being L-O-V-E and ego being l-i-v-e living so the spirit experiencing itself is the ego that's to live so love is to live so you're trying to live what you love true love from a spirit space is giving with no expectation it is desirelessness and then overall desirelessness that supports other spirits desires which is Fulfilling spirit's ultimate desire to be given whatever they want with no expectation because everyone wishes they could have that like that's the point of prayer (laughs) That's the point of religion. That's literally like what humans are just stuck in. That's all this manifesting stuff on the internet Everyone wishes that's the point of wishes. All right. So here we are Here we are. Here we are the idea of being able to create anything and how that's the natural state of spirit But the ego can't do that necessarily because the point is that we're grounding our infinity in relatable ways together. And now we desire to express our spirits here and we all feel infinite in some different degree. And we can all conceive that we all have imaginations. And we can do anything in our imaginations. So when you're sending love to someone, I'm saying all this to hammer in that when you send love to someone, send it more so not with whatever you like, just love, but I desire to support this person's individuality with no expectation of them supporting mine. And that's love, like that's wild love. Cause most people are like, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Like I'll support them. I love you, bro. But like, I got to get love back. That's not love. 
You feel me? Like, that's not love. That's like, I mean, that's, that's currency. That's currency. That's um, an equal exchange. Like, the point of love is that it's giving with no expectation. Love is a mom. Like a mom created, made your body, created life inside of her, incubated you for nine months so that you can be a nine dimensional being to come into this reality. And then she continues to nurture and love you. And if she's a really good mom, the, the best moms have the least expectations. So then of course we see like the worst moms are the ones who like have heavier and heavier expectations to the point where they put that on the kid and they end up like killing their own child <laughs> with the expectations that they had of them. So of course the best moms, the true love is a light. This is the point. It's freedom. It's supporting the freedom of others. That's why I love being a Taurus. The point of being a Taurus is to be the platform that allows others to express their infinite individuality. Sometimes you may not feel love for a person and yet you still desire peace. In that case, be still, send thoughts of peace, and ask the presence of divine love to surround them. Chapter 18. Be free from the bonds of darkness. O oh, men, list to the voice of wisdom, list to the voice of light. Mysteries there are in the cosmos that unveiled fill the world with their light. Let he who would be free from the bonds of darkness first divine the material from the immaterial, the fire from the earth. For know ye that as earth descends to earth, so also fire ascends unto fire, and becomes one with fire. He who knows the fire that is within himself shall ascend unto the eternal fire and dwell in it eternally. Thos Commentary in Modern English The voice of wisdom is the voice of light. It is in paying attention to your inner guidance. That is the great mysteries of the cosmos are revealed. That the great, okay, cool. If you desire to be free from the bonds of darkness, release all fears of being overtaken by that darkness, right? It's just like they're, they're not explaining darkness like I just did in everything. I'm so glad I'm here. You know, I can make it work with English. <laughs> it's whatever, I, you know, uh, obviously I wrote way more way more than one white supremacists are ever going to find then two they're even going to be able to decode or transcribe and then three they would even come close to releasing for the normal public to consume like everything that i create vibrates at the frequency of freedom my guy and if there's anything America's not, if there's anything that Freemasonic, Roman, Greco, Christian, Judeo, governmental systems around the world are not, it's free. They weaponize freedom to sell slavery. That's cool. <laughs> Whoa. All right. If you desire to be free from the bonds of darkness, release all fears of being overtaken by that darkness. If you desire to be free from the... Okay, cool. <laughs> First realize that there is a difference between the material world and the spiritual world. I'm cracking myself up right now. The fire within your soul is related to the fire within the earth. Your body will return to earth dust one day, but the fire in your soul will live on. When you know that the fire within your soul is eternal, then you do not fear death. Your soul is eternally one with the fire. I mean, that's facts. 
The fire within your soul, your soul is your water. So your soul is how you connect with your own fire. So the fire within your soul is your imagination from which your feelings come from. And it's just that your imagination is powered by the ultimate feeling, which is your spirit. And that's freedom. And really your spirit is using freedom to create imagination when your spirit is nothing at all. It's just that that nothingness is the closest thing to freedom because it's detachment, desirelessness. <clears throat> there must be a balance of the material. Uh, so Shah contributes her wisdom. While the material world is needed for man's existence on the earth plane, it is his inner fire that lives on forever. There must be a balance of the material and the immaterial fire of spirit to bring about the unveiling of even more mysteries. Man has long sought after the unknown. It is an unquenchable fire within that keeps us ever evolving. Sashat uses the word us because every deity figure is also seeking evolution. There is no stagnation in the human field or the spiritual field. I wish they would put these in simple terms. That's why I'm... My phone cut out before I could just say that they need to just say the only constant is change. It's that simple. Like they work so hard to stretch out little tiny basic bits of wisdom into all of this infinite knowledge. And they just want to consume your time with all their knowledge. Chapter 19, the most potent fire of all. From tablet 3, verse 19. Fire, the inner fire, is most potent of all force, for it overcometh all things and penetrate to all things of the earth. Imagination. Man supports himself only on that which resists, so earth, so earth must resist man, else he exists not. Right. Those commentary in modern English. The fire of the soul is indeed the most potent life force in all the universe, for it is capable of overcoming all obstacles. There is no part of the earth that this human fire cannot penetrate. Imagination. There must be resistance or opposite to what is desired to bring about appreciation. That's exactly what I just said. There we go. Light would not be appreciated if there is no dark. Honestly, yo. Sexy six, these tablets might be the hardest out of all of them. I don't think any of the tablets have been this positive about darkness. I don't, I don't think any of them like are got into balance this hard. Good would not even be recognized if there was no evil. All forces contribute toward man's evolution. Right. Absolutely. And I mean, demons are awesome. Haters are motivators. They level you up in ways that people who love you, who desire to keep you comfortable. I don't know why I did air quotes for comfortable. I said people who love you. There we go. That's where the air quotes are. But people who desire to keep you comfortable. People who desire to keep you comfortable. They won't challenge you in the ways that people who don't want you to be comfortable will. People who want you to be very uncomfortable will truly challenge you in ways that will make you level up. So Shah contributes her wisdom. The inner fire is akin to the magnetism that is generated by the heart. Humanity's consciousness is a bridge between the seen and the unseen. It is a joining of these two elements that make it possible to transform all things. Resistance is but a stepping stone to higher evolution. When one obstacle is dissolved, another takes its place. Overcoming and transforming is the path of greatest evolution. The earth plane is destined to always be on the cutting edge of evolutionary growth. True. 
Other species gather around to watch as humanity struggles to move forward. You have a great cheerleading section of benevolent beings. Be aware that there are also nefarious beings who wish you harm. Remember that the light always prevails. Therefore, my beloved Thoth has always admonished humanity to seek the light. I, I mean, not seek the light. Seek, no, no. My beloved Thoth has always admonished humanity to seek the light. Opposite. What? <laughs> opposite. Opposite that. I, I said opposite. I said I literally just spent this whole time of talks talking about darkness and like sitting in it and reflecting other people's light because it's all light. And then in general, you need to know that true freedom is not being attached to light at all because light is love because spirits love to use light to express their nothingness. So light is something. And then that's where, depending on how heavy you make your light, it gets denser and denser. And that's where we have fire into earth. And then numbers are like how light naturally moves in a cycle based on like just naturally moving in a cycle. <laughs> how we ascend and stuff. Zero. All possibilities. One, imagination. Two, connection. Three, communication. Four, structure. Five, transformation. Six, balance creation between all spirits, spirits being able to use the five, which is a transformation of physical reality made from the four, three, two, and one, all inside the zero, to have six with each other as well as themselves and create all of life and continue creating life. And seven, eight, and nine, seven is consciousness, eight is the subconscious, nine is the unconscious, making nine the spirit, eight the soul, and seven the light body. Honestly, we're going to end it here. Peace out. See you in part nine.